Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, welcome to the first lecture of fourth unit of plant biotechnology course. In this unit we will learn about plant and microbial interactions, plant growth promoting rhizobacteria, their mechanism of action, nitrogen fixation and plant genetic engineering. My name is Manoj Sharma and I am working as an assistant professor of plant biology at Jawaharlal Nehru University. At JNU I teach plant biotechnology and genetic engineering courses at School of Biotechnology. These lectures have been reviewed by Professor Kashmir Singh who is working as a professor of biology at School of Biotechnology Punjab University, Chandigarh. This project has been sponsored by DTH Swayam Prabha, MHRD, New Delhi. So in this lecture, I will discuss about the interactions among plants and the microbes. More specifically, I will talk about the plant growth promoting rhizobacteria. It will be followed by the classification of uh, these growth promoting rhizobacteria and various signaling components that are involved in the interactions between these plant roots and uh, uh, plant growth promoting rhizobacteria. First, let's talk about the association of plants and microbes. Plants have very close relationship with the microorganisms. There are a large number of communities of microbes that live in association with the plants. In fact, microbes partner with the plants since their evolution. That is, when the evolution of the plants started, microbes were already there and hence plants have evolved with the microbes that means there is a very long partnership between the plants and the microbes and this partnership or the relationship have evolved over the time microbes are present all around the plant it means that they are there on all the parts of the plant like the stem, fruit, leaf. You pick any organ of the field grown plant, you will find microbes associated with it. So typically the question is not whether where are the microbes present on the plant or whether the microbes are present. Rather the question should be how much microbes or how many microbes are present and what kind of interactions they have. Some parts of the plants would have more number of microbes as compared to the other parts. Like their number would be much higher in the roots as compared to the aerial parts of the plants. And similarly, the number of uh, microbes associated with the leaves may be higher as compared to the stem. Further, they are not only present on the plant paths or around the plant, but they are present inside the plant also. That is, inside the plant tissues. They may be present in the extracellular spaces in the root tissue or they can even live within the plant cells. So virtually 
all organs of the plants interact with the microbes at certain stage of their life and depending upon the type of association between the microbes and plants there may be different kind of interactions among them some of them may be general interactions whereas others may be very specific interactions depending upon the effect of these interactions on the plant health they are categorized into three parts that is pathogens plant growth promoting uh, bacteria and the commensals like there are microbes whose interaction is harmful to the plants that is they not only get benefited from the association but usually cause diseases in the plants and interfere or compromises the growth and development of the host these or these microbes are called as pathogens then there are other microbes which are useful for the plant there are several interactions where both of them get benefited from each other's presence these are categorized as plant growth promoting bacteria there are many other microbes though they are there but they may not have any significant impact on the plant's growth however they are there because they get benefited from the presence of the plant and these organisms or microbes that do not impact the plant however they get benefited from the uh, plant's presence these are categorized as a commensals plant depend on their microbial partners for several of their functions therefore crop yields or the plant productivity can be influenced by the microbial associations and hence these interactions are very important to the increase in agriculture productivity in this lecture i will focus on the interactions of the microbes with the plant roots let's learn little bit about the soil microbes soil is a home of a large number of organisms there are large number of species of different organisms in nature millions of species have been uh, estimated for plants and animals however for microorganisms as they are very small in size it is very difficult to estimate the number of their species however this number is much higher as compared to the species of other organisms that we usually can see it is suggested that uh, this number may be up to a billion or even more if we just analyze a gram of soil there can be up to 10 billion cells per gram of the soil and certainly these will not be same however there will be diverse range of uh, uh, different types of species uh, in that uh, in that number though it will not be universally applicable that is the number of microbes would vary at uh, different locations depending upon the availability of the nutrient resources in that soil or even the type of the soil too here we are talking about the soil in a uh, in the rhizosphere that is in the close vicinity of the roots uh, which is uh, nutrient rich or the other soils which are organic matter rich they have uh, also very high density of the microbes prokaryotes encompass a surprisingly very high genetic and functional diversity there are large number of prokaryotic species uh, that exist in the nature or 
specifically they live in the soil. In addition to the bacterial cell, up to a million cells of fungi may be there in just a gram of a soil. Filamentous fungi or the filamentous network of the fungi extend through the soil and their associations are very important. There are fungi that live inside the plant tissues and are called as endophytic fungi. There may be up to a billions of uh, virons or the viruses in a gram of the soil. So the first thing that comes to mind about the viruses is that these are the bad guys. They cause diseases. Certainly many of or the most of the pathogen that causes diseases in the plants, but there are many viruses that uh, uh, may not have a negative impact on the plant. Viruses are being exploited for the horticultural interests and many appear to be mutualists. Even it has been found that in certain situations, there may be a beneficial effect on the plant's health because of the presence of the virus itself. Then there may be other larger organisms in the soil like uh, algae, protists, nematodes, and so on. There may be up to 10,000 cells of uh, algae or up to 10,000 cells of protists, just in again a gram of a soil. Overall, uh, soil is a complex environment or a complex ecosystem. And certainly, it's a home of a very large proportion of the uh, world's biodiversity. Each type of organism has an important role in this ecosystem. If we see the numbers, probably number of the virons or the viruses would be highest. But by the biomass, it is the bacteria that has an upper hand and also as far as the information is available, the impact of the or the positive impact of the microbes that has on the plant is the bacteria or the plant growth promoting bacteria. In this complex environment, the growth and development of the organism is impacted by the presence or the uh, absence of other microbes and specifically bacteria are more important and we will discuss more uh, about these bacteria in this lecture. Before going ahead, let's learn about a few very important terms that are associated with the plant microbe interactions and uh, I will be using these terms frequently in this lecture. First is the phytomicrobiome. The community of all the microbes that colonizes the plants or are associated with the plant in some way are collectively called as phytomicrobiome. Next is the holobiont. So if the community of all the microbes associated with the plant that is the phytomicrobiome along with the plant collectively they make the holobiont. Next is the rhizosphere. Now it's the environment, soil environment in very close vicinity of the roots, usually few millimeter region around the roots or uh, even inside the roots. So basically where, where the microbes uh, they, they proliferate or they colonize. Like here is a drawing of the root tip and uh, this region in the close vicinity of the root, this narrow region, it may be few millimeter uh, wide. There isn't any strict uh, definition of the width of this region and this narrow region is called as a rhizosphere or more specifically Actorhizosphere. This region is directly affected by the secretions from the plant roots or the root exudates. Because this region has confined nutrient pool, 
because of uh, the secretions from the plant roots in which the essential macro and micro elements and other photosynthates are secreted it is the zone of maximum microbial activity the term rhizosphere was defined by hilner in 1904 However, since then it has been refined and now the whole rhizosphere has been categorized into uh, different zones like endorhizosphere and ectorhizosphere. So this region which is in close vicinity of the root uh, a few millimeter this narrow region a few millimeter wide this is called as a ectorhizosphere towards the outside the root and uh, uh, it's the soil region. However, the microbes may be present in the free spaces between the cells that is the apoplastic spaces in the cortex or other tissues of the root too. And now this region where the microbes are present in the tissues outside the cells like in the apoplastic spaces this is called as a endorhizosphere. And the third part is the rhizoplane. Now it is the region where the root surface is in contact with the soil. So typically it is the inner limit of the rhizosphere. This is the level where the roots exchange elements with the surrounding soil and is considered as a region that drive the nutrient movements in the rhizosphere or in the rhizosphere. In this region, though the microbial cell densities uh, are very high as compared to the ectorhizosphere, but that have reduced level of diversity as compared to the uh, ectorhizosphere or the surrounding soil. And then another term is uh, a rhizomicrobiome. So it is the collection of the microbial communities or the microbes associated with the plant roots in the rhizosphere. So any organism that are present in the ectorhizosphere or rhizoplane or in the endorhizosphere collectively they all make the rhizomicrobiome or the in other words rhizomicrobiome include all the microbes which are living in the endo or ecto rhizosphere or at the rhizoplane. Now let's start with the plant microbial relationships. So in the soil there exists different level of intimacy between the plant and the microbes as far as they interact to each other. There may be different level of uh, interactions. Some microbes are intimately associated with the plant while others stay in the close vicinity but they do not directly get into the system. Closer is the microbe from the plant roots, more will be the influence of the plant on the microbial community and the other way also that the effect of the microbes on the plants too. So here is in this picture we see that the roots are growing in the soil and different type of uh, microbes are present in the soil. These different shapes of diverse colors they represent the various types of uh, microbes or the microbes diversity. Now these microbes are present throughout the soil. However their densities as well as the diversity depend upon the several factors. Typically the nutrient in the organic matter rich soil uh, would have higher microbial populations or the densities as more uh, nutrients would be available for uh, uh, the microbes to proliferate and survive. Next is the zoomed in drawing of the root. Now we can see here the region which is in immediate vicinity of the root and this is called as a ectorhizosphere. It's a narrow region and this region would usually have a higher microbial densities. 
नेक्स्ट लेवल ऑफ इंटीमेसी इज द एंडोफाइट्स और एंडोफाइट माइक्रोब्स नो द एंडोफाइट्स आर द माइक्रोब्स दैट कॉलोनाइज इन साइड द प्लांट टिश्यूज दैट मीन्स these microbes enter the plant tissues and live in the tissues in a close association with the cells these are known to enhance the growth of the host plant and also improve the stress tolerance ability of the plants or they may causes negative impact on the plant that is they may causes diseases in the plants and compromise the health of the plant these microorganisms that live inside the root tissue constitute endorhizomicrobiome so this whole part of the roots uh, can be called as a uh, endorhizosphere and all these microbes that are present in the ectorhizosphere that is this narrow region rhizoplane that is the inner this inner face of the ectorhizosphere which is in contact with the roots and the microbes present in the ectorhizosphere they are collectively called as a rhizomicrobiome endophytes may be of two types that is uh, the first category is uh, the ones that wind non specifically to the plant root surface and enter the system through the uh, wound stomata cracks or some openings basically so these type of associations are non specific type of association second category of the endophytes is uh, uh, those that uh, infect specific species so basically their infection is uh, very specific they live in the symbiotic relationship with the with the host species like the rhizobia in the legumes and these are very specific type of associations or the symbiotic associations now this is a typical structure of the plant cell where various organs are listed the mitochondria in the chloroplast or plastids which are the organelle of the cell they display the most intimate and the oldest association of the microbes with the plant cells these organelle have been evolved from uh, plant associated microbes into a permanently subcellular structures of the cell similarly there are other microbes that can uh, infect the plant cells and they live within the cells so overall there are two groups of uh, organisms that is uh, uh first is the rhizospheric more specifically uh, they are in the ectorhizosphere these are the microbes that live in the close association with the plant roots that is in the ectorhizosphere or in the rhizoplane and uh, second is the endophytes typically that means these microbes live inside the tissues that is in the endorhizosphere now let's focus on the specific category of the microbes that is plant growth promoting bacteria the bacteria that uh, have a positive impact on the plant growth and development a field grown plant is a well structured regulated and complex community of the microorganisms so any plant growing in the field is not just an individual however it is in constant relationship with a large number of microbes that may have both beneficial or harmful impact on the plant growth microbial communities varies with the plants each plant has specific type of complex communities that is the microbes associated with the particular type of plant are not just randomly there or rather their growth is well regulated and in other words the whole microbial community around the plant is well structured these associations of the microbial communities or the microbes with the terrestrial plant did not originate in the recent time 
rather they existed since the earliest colonizations of the land plants. When the land plants started to evolve, microbes were already there and so the association is as old as the existence of the plants. The group of uh, the bacteria that colonizes the roots of the plants and has a beneficial effects on plants growth that means they enhances the plants growth and productivity are called as plant growth promoting bacteria however the plant growth promoting bacteria has to be in the close vicinity or in the uh, inside the tissues of the plant that is the microbes colonizes in the rhizosphere whether in the ecto or endo rhizosphere these are what are called as the plant growth promoting rhizobacteria and uh, in short form will be used uh, as pgpr the term pgpr was introduced by uh, clopper from the university of california berkeley and uh, sharath from uh, uc san diego in 1980 they actually use the group of strains from uh, pseudomonas florescens uh, with the roots of uh, some crops like the potato sugar beet or radish and they showed that the colonization of these particular bacteria with the roots of these crops increased the crops productivity or the yield substantially so there are several diverse bacterial communities that are useful for the plants and they live in the rhizosphere and these are called as plant growth promoting rhizobacteria or pgpr with respect to the location or the plant compartment where these microbes live pgprs can be classified into two groups that is epgpr means the extracellular plant growth promoting rhizobacteria and ipgpr that is the intracellular plant growth promoting rhizobacteria the first one is the epgprs that is the extracellular pgprs these are free living bacteria or free living pgprs so they may be present in the rhizosphere that has three zones ecto rhizosphere endo rhizosphere or in the rhizoplane however they are extracellular they are free living here is a typical structure of the root tip as we saw earlier that this narrow region in the close vicinity of the root is called as the ecto rhizosphere typically it can be up to a few millimeter in width around the roots or the rhizoplane that is this the inner surface of uh, the rhizosphere or we can say that they are in contact with the with the root surface or they colonizes on the root surface and then the endo rhizosphere that is they may be present inside the root tissues but in the spaces between the cells of the roots so basically these are the free living but can be present anywhere in the rhizosphere there may be a diverse type of microbes in these regions and uh, collectively they are called as the rhizosphere microbes and uh, they are because they are extracellular they fall in the category of uh, uh, epgpr some of the important genera that uh, belong to this category are azotobacter axospirillum bacillus species uh, pseudomonas or the agrobacterium Uh, we will uh, specifically learn more about the agrobacterium later in the unit when we when we will talk about or learn about the plant genetic engineering second category is ipgpr that is intracellular plant growth promoting rhizobacteria so pgpr living in the intracellular spaces that is living within the cells inside the cells they are called as ipgpr usually they are present in the specialized nodal structures or the nodule structures of the root cells and are called as the root nodules their association with the plant is a 
symbiotic one that is they help each other they both get benefited from each other's presence some of the common ipgprs belong to the genus bradyrhizobium or mesorhizobium and rhizobium from the family rhizobiaceae rhizobia that fix the nitrogen in symbiosis or the symbiotic arrangement with the higher plants have been well studied and there is a considerable understanding about the mechanism of action how these rhizobia they establish the connection uh, with the with the plant roots or how they fix the uh, nitrogen or uh, what kind of uh, roles they play during the symbiosis we will discuss about these uh, mechanism and their roles a uh, little bit in more detail in next lecture now plants have very specific association with the type of organisms that means specific type of microbes are associated with the specific plants and plants actively play an important role to select or allow the specific microbes to grow around them in other words plants regulate the composition of the rhizomicrobiome further many microbes produces plant hormones and uh, impact the growth and development of the plants similarly there are other signal molecules that are important for these plant and microbe interactions and we are just beginning to understand about these molecule or these interactions so currently there are three categories under which we can discuss the regulation of this uh, micro uh, rhizomicrobiome or the interactions of uh, uh, the roots and the rhizospheric microbes first is the root exudates that are the secretions from the plant roots second is the plant hormones produced by the uh, by the microbes that is the phytohormones produced by the microbes and third is the other components or the other metabolites or signal molecules that can play important role as a signal transducers so the first category is root exudates plant roots secrete several compounds that support the growth and activities of the microbial communities in the rhizosphere plant synthesizes several different kind of compounds through the photosynthesis and uh, several of them are secreted from the roots and are called as a root exudates these root exudates provides a way to regulate the rhizomicrobiome in fact uh, in some cases as high as up to 30 to 35% of the photosynthesis or the metabolites other type metabolites which are produced from the primary photosynthesis they can be secreted in the form of the root exudates and the concentration of the microbes in the rhizosphere can be up to 1000 folds higher as compared to the rest of the soil or away from the rhizosphere usually root exudates comprises of the organic compounds of low molecular weight like sugars amino acids organic acids or secondary metabolites like uh, flavonoids terpenes or other phenolic compounds and uh, root exudates also contain the organic compounds of high molecular weight like the polypeptide or proteins uh, polysaccharides or the mucilages materials in some cases root exudates may contain the antibiotics also and they may inhibit or help to prevent the activity of the microbes in the rhizosphere or may help to control the activity of uh, uh, or prevent the growth of uh, specific organisms or microbes in the rhizosphere these chemicals or the metabolites 
that are secreted by the plant roots directly regulate the microbial interactions in the rhizosphere. These metabolites attract specific microbes to the rhizosphere. Different microbes metabolize different type of compounds. That means one particular metabolite may be important for the survival of a particular species. However, it may not be useful for the other species that, as that is not able to uh, use it or uh, metabolize it. And this is how the microbial communities in the rhizosphere are established and uh, their colonization can be regulated by the plant through altering the composition of the root exudates. Like they provide the signals for initiating the symbiosis either with the rhizobacteria or with the mycorrhizal fungi. So it is the type of the signal in the form of metabolite or the chemical or the form of a signal that will regulate this relationship or uh, that will define what kind of relationship or interaction has to be established between the plant and the microbes. Depending upon the composition of the root exudates, that is what kind of metabolites or energy molecules are secreted, microbial microbes type or the type of the microorganisms that colonizes there or their number, uh, it may vary in the rhizosphere. The composition of the root exudates is genetically regulated. And therefore, exudate composition vary among the different plant species from different genera or the different families. As the composition of the exudates would vary, it would affect the colonization of the microbes. That is, due to the change in the composition of the exudates, the existing communities may not be able to use or proliferate. However, the new components of the these of these excretions or the exudates may be suitable for the another microbial species that was earlier not there. And so uh, that may proliferate and uh, uh, colonizes in the rhizosphere in this changed environment. Therefore, the rhizobacterial communities may vary in the rhizosphere of the plants of different species growing in the same soil or in the same ecological environment. The exudate composition can also vary with the age of the plant and other environmental conditions uh, where it grows. Like the composition of these secretions is very different in the, at the seedling stage as compared to the situation when the plant is mature or at the senescent stage. So basically the, the type of organisms that are going to colonize, they are going to vary uh, at the different uh, uh, stages of the life cycle of the plant. Further, the external environmental factors, uh, they also uh, changes the, or they, they can alter the type of uh, organism which are colonizing because they can impact on the secretions of the root exudates. For example, the biotic stress like infestation of the disease or the abiotic stress factors like drought, heat, salinity, cold stress, etc. They can directly affect the composition of the exudates and hence they can affect or alter the communities that colonizes in the rhizosphere. So the variation in the root exudates provides a mechanism or a control by which the plants can manipulate the composition of the microbial communities in their rhizosphere. Root exudates can mediate both positive as well as 
negative type of interactions. The positive interactions are like the establishment of the symbiotic relationship, establishment of uh, mycorrhizal associations or the recruitment of the bacteria that help in the plant growth positively. That is recruitment of the PGPRs. Root exudates can simply induce the plant defense responses also and hence reduces the plant's susceptibility to the infection by pathogens. Or in other cases, these, uh, uh, these uh, defense responses may simply initiate the production of some other metabolites like the leaf volatiles. Now, in some species, they, these leaf volatiles, they act or they recruit or attract the predators of the plant animals. So, basically, they are, uh, they are secreted in response to some defense response and they recruit the predators of uh, their, of their uh, invaders or their pathogens. However, these may result in the negative interactions also, like these may attract the parasite too. Further, they may initiate allelopathic responses, that is, the components of the root exudates may inhibit the germination of plants from other species. Or they may increase the competition between the PGPR by attracting the commensal microbes. So, so there, there are negative interactions. They may attract the, the bacteria or the microbes that may, that are either pathogen, may cause the disease, or they may cause the allelopathic responses. So overall, root exudates are very important components of the plant's life cycle they may result in positive or the negative interactions with the microbial communities. However, their positive or the beneficial effects are much more as compared to the negative ones. So the second category uh, or the second important component of uh, the interactions is the phytohormones produced by PGPR. The microorganisms, that is the PGPRs, can directly influence the plant growth by synthesizing phytohormones. Many PGPRs synthesize phytohormones and manipulate the hormonal balance of the plants. Basically, when these PGPRs synthesize phytohormones, they are released in the rhizosphere, maybe in the ectorhizosphere or in the endorhizosphere or in the, in the rhizoplane. And from here, these hormones are taken up by the plant roots and hence it manipulates the, the hormonal balance of the plant. And if they are uh, if they are secreted by the bacteria or PGPR living in the endorhizosphere, they are already there in the tissues and they are easily taken up by the cells. So it has been found that they boost the growth of the plants as well as the ability of the plant to tolerate the stress conditions. Phytohormones play several important roles in plants growth and development like they affect the mineral nutrition, water relations, resistance to the pathogen or antioxidant functions. PGPRs can synthesize different kinds of plant hormones like they make synthesize different types of auxins or cytokinins gibralins, abscisic acid, and so on. The concentration as well as the type of these hormones that are secreted by the PGPR, it differs among different PGPR species 
and may have different type of impact on the plant growth. PGPRs produces auxins that uh, affect the root growth as well as the root architecture. Though different type of PGPR synthesized auxins have been uh, identified, however, indole 3 acetic acid is the one that has been widely studied for its effect on the plant. These auxins or uh, IAA or indole 3 acetic acid have been found to stimulate the root branching and elongation of the roots. This stimulation results in increase in overall root biomass. Further, these may regulate the size of the stomata and their density too. The impact of exogenous auxins which are synthesized and secreted by PGPR would depend upon the endogenous level of IAA in the roots. Endogenous level of the plant hormones are genetically regulated and hence it would vary among the different species, even in the different tissues and also at the different uh, stages of the life cycle. And therefore, different plant species would respond differently to the auxins secreted by plant growth promoting rhizobacteria. Further, the exogenous concentrations of the auxins produced by PGPR can also have a differential impact on the plant's growth and development. Like up to the moderate concentrations of uh, PGPR auxins in the rhizosphere, it uh, stimulates the branching of the roots and also it may or may not enhance the root elongation. However, it do not have a negative impact on the root elongation. So it do not uh, inhibit the root elongation. However, at the higher concentrations of the PGPR auxins, these have an inhibitory impact on the root elongation. So this inhibitory impacts are usually associated with the ethylene production. As we know that the dicots are uh, more sensitive to the auxins as compared to the monocots, similarly the inhibitory impact of the auxin on the root elongation is uh, high in case of the dicots as compared to the monocots. Further, ACC deaminase that is uh, one amino cyclopropane one carboxylic deaminase its activity inhibit the ethylene production as ACC is the direct precursor of the ethylene. Therefore, even if the concentration of the auxins is high that can cause the inhibition of the root elongation, the PGPR derived ACC deaminase activity decreases the ethylene synthesis and thereby reduces the inhibition of uh, root elongation. In other words, we can also say that the presence of uh, PGPR derived ACC deaminase activity in the rhizosphere may enhance the root elongation even in the presence of a uh, higher amount of auxin. Next is the cytokine hormone. So the PGPRs synthesize cytokine hormones too that affect the plant growth and development. Cytokines usually have roles in morphogenic responses and it is the balance between the cytokine and auxins that is the key to this regulation. Further, PGPR cytokinins or PGPR secreted cytokinin may enhance the production of the root exudates. And as we discussed earlier, changes in the 
alteration of the root exudates can alter the rhizomicrobiome it may result in recruitment of uh, other pgpr species to the rhizosphere too it has been found in some plants that when the free cytokinin bases are applied these get absorbed in the roots or they retained in the roots and overall they inhibit the root growth their impact is the uh, the inhibition in the growth of the roots however if these cytokinins are ribosylated these are easily transported to the shoots that is they are not entrapped in the roots they are transported to the shoots and uh, there they stimulate the shoot growth therefore it is the quality of the cytokinin or the chemical form of the molecules uh, this may have uh, different type of effects on the on the plant's growth and development similarly pgpr produced other hormones like uh, gibberellins or the abscessic acid they also affect the plant development however uh, for these hormones very little data is available aba producing pgpr participate in aba dependent mechanisms of drought tolerance and help to economize the water use by closing the stomata under severe drought conditions or water limiting conditions so the application of the aba producing pgprs can improve the performance of the crop under water limiting conditions in conclusion we can say that the pgpr produced phytohormones are important signals in the plant microbial interactions or uh, establishment of uh, the the relationship between the microbes and the plant roots now in addition to the phytohormones there are several other substances or the metabolites that are produced by the pgprs and can impact the plant health pgprs produces several secondary metabolites and volatile organic compounds that improve the stress tolerance in plants and also stimulate their growth many pgprs like bacillus bacterium produces polyamines that play an important physiological and protective role in the plants bacillus bacterium produces polyamine spermidine and it has been found to induce the polyamine production in arabidopsis which resulted in the accumulation of higher biomass it also altered the root architecture in the arabidopsis and also enhanced the overall photosynthetic uh, efficiency now it's not that the microbes impact the growth or the physiology of the plants only these microbes can impact the activities of each other in the rhizosphere like some pgprs produces hydrogen cyanide which control the growth of the deleterious microbes in the rhizosphere however it is also suggested recently that the hydro a uh, hydrogen cyanide increases the phosphate availability indirectly by reducing the metal toxicity so the overall whether through the phosphate availability or by reducing the uh, growth of deleterious microbes it results in the uh, improved plant performance or plant productivity similarly there are other compounds that can work as the signal molecules between the microbes and the plants like the lumicrom now the lumicrom is a photodegradation product of the riboflavin and affect the plant development at low concentrations lumicrom can uh, accelerate the development of the leaves that is it enhances the growth of the leaves as well as 
uh, their expansion. It stimulates elongation of the stem in both monocots as well as uh, in dicots. So overall, it can enhance the leaf area considerably and result in the improved biomass production. However, at higher concentrations, Lumicron suppresses the root development as well as it further reduces the, uh, the leaf growth or the leaf expansion. So, at higher concentration, its effects are reversed. Overall, it has been observed that uh, the effects of the Lumicron are very similar to the exogenous applications of the AVA or the abscisic acid. Like they work as a signal for functioning of the stomata. They can also act as a protectant or the elisters for uh, uh, plant defense. They can also work as a growth factors or they are also the ecological cues for sensing the environmental stress. So there are a lot of similarities between the impact of uh, the lumicrom and uh, abscisic acid applications. In conclusion, few molecules or the metabolites have been identified that work as the signal molecules for the plant and microbial interactions. However, it is uh, just the beginning and we understand very little about the plant microbial interactions. So in summary, we discussed about the microbial diversity in the soil and talked about the various levels of uh, plant microbial relationships. We specifically discussed about the plant growth promoting uh, rhizobacteria that is PGPRs or the rhizosphere or different zones of the rhizosphere. We discussed about the classifications of the PGPR based on the location where they are present. And then finally, we talked about the various type of signals or the regulatory molecules that mediate the interactions between the plants and PGPRs. Uh, we will continue talking about PGPRs in the next lecture too, where we will discuss about the mechanism of action of PGPRs. Uh, we will talk about uh, nitrogen fixation and its mechanism and then the commercial applications of uh, the PGPRs. Thank you.